Hi, everyone. Welcome to this weird episode of Retention Zone when I'm not interviewing anybody, but I'm talking about Retention Zone at NAB in Las Vegas. The NAB show is this huge broadcast streaming technology exhibition in the, in the desert in Nevada. And it's like an annual, it's like the ABC on steroids in the US, if you're familiar with the ABC in Amsterdam. And um, so I was there this year for two main reasons. One, um, I organized and moderated the panel for Dan Rainburn's uh, Streaming Summit, which is a two-day summit, which back-to-back -back, with back-to-back -back sessions uh, really reach, all focus on streaming, uh, extremely rigorous in terms of uh, being uh, a no bullshit moment where you really listen to people that are building, operating, designing, launching, selling, streaming uh, in the US, in Europe and, and in Asia um, with a, a lot of interesting facts and um, experience from people that are really <coughs> involved in it. So. I don't want to say there were no strategy talks, but a strategy based on experience and no real cases. So it was really two days full of interesting sessions. There was also a track on AI. By the way, I saw someone rightly enough saying, what have you, you know, discovered at NAB, but please don't talk about AI retention, funny enough, and, and other things that were, you know, like buzzwords. Again, not saying that those are not buzzwords, they are. But again, if you put real content and real experience behind it, why not? I mean, uh, to be honest, I have talked about AI a lot in very pragmatic terms with people doing real things with AI. I have talked about uh, strategies for retention and you know bundling, rebundling of streaming services, understanding audiences, fan engagement in sports. So. Honestly, all of them are buzzword until you don't really talk to people who are doing something about it or with it or creating solution for, for them. So uh, apart from that, um, as you may know, I'm an advisor at Clink. It's also the presenting sponsor, full disclosure of Retention Zone. Uh, they had a really impressive boot there with a lot of people, a lot of activities. I also met some old friends from the sport industry in the US there. So it was a fascinating uh, two full days. A bit of a short, long trip for a short day, but super intense. And um, the other thing I noticed is clearly, uh, in terms of big players, a massive presence by AWS. Um, I know <laughs> that they are really pushing hard in everything that is uh, what they now call MAGS, Media, Entertainment, Gaming, and Sport. And I've uh, stolen their internal structure and acronym just to create my own version of what the hell are we doing in this space? What do we call the space we're operating? For most of us, I think Max, media, entertainment, gaming, and sport, seems to cover it, you know, with the background of technology, seems to cover pretty well. And AWS was really massive present, huge booth with all their staff and meeting rooms, plus pods, plus an area area with, with pods. I also met a company there called Atelier, I think Creative Technology, which does, who does a lot of uh, cool stuff in uh, the production part of the workflow for streaming and others. Um, clearly, Microsoft was present, but less because they kind of said they will retire Azure Media Services. So I also saw very active the three, maybe the three companies that uh, would benefit the most on one end from Amazon leaving the space, which is the one I'm like, Microsoft honestly said, okay, we're not doing it anymore. Just go to Harmonic, Bitmoving and MediaKind. So these companies were present there. Uh, also, they're quite impressive present. And in general, I think the, um, I can say <laughs> the vibe was okay, but clearly it's an industry that is in not only in transformation, but profitability is starting to become the real focus for everybody, if not cash flow. As obvious, um, uh, as always, sorry, Dan Rainburn's at the beginning of the two days he is a very rigorous to the fact, to the number um, guy. And he introduced both on one end and on the other, the fact that profitability uh, is really the core focus. Um, we saw the number, Netflix seems to be the, I don't want to say the only one profitable, but the only one that found the way to profitability. Um, they just announced that, uh, for example, 
they will they're, they're growing they grew nine million subscribers but also they won't report subscribers going forward but other metrics and not sure because of that or what but the the stock went down even if the the news were very good so i, I i'm still trying to figure out what happened there on the other end i think something that was very interesting was the um, disney plus uh, not only signing a deal for some <coughs> wefa uh, uh, competition in club competition in um, denmark and sweden which is quite a, a, a new thing for disney plus on the other end uh, they uh, they've announced they will put some pseudo fast channel inside their app so linear channel so there is clearly and and that's also was clear when i i moderated the, um, the panel that i'll talk about later uh there are so many ways to increase the retention uh of your streaming platforms and and, and minimize churn but in the end creating businesses that are sustainable per se as streaming business and and clearly the the thing that uh happened in the last 18 months is more and more hybrid models that combine not only avod and svod so advertisement based and a subscription based direct to consumer but even pay-per-view etc this model are becoming the norm in the more mature platform because they really have to put together a series of revenue streams that complement each other and on the other end the biggest uh, i would say trend i've seen is trying to aggregate all all services you can offer in one destination and i don't know amazon walmart in the us um other in 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 in, in asia they're all trying to do kind of the same thing so put everything in one place uh, and apple is doing the same if you want Dazon in terms of sport is also trying to do the same add in fanatics add in bedding so the one destination uh where people can go there and get most of what they're looking for seems to be also another trend more directly on the panel that i moderated and in, in day two of the streaming summit in las vegas i was with christy tanner and ex cbs uh, executive that launched a lot of streaming services through the years um now a, a consultant with the strategy com, uh, company i think she founded called Coralie partners mm -hmm. and then yannick ramke from one football the head of ott at one football um my friend andrea seiden uh ex bundesliga now uh, at dine here two uh, aggregation of sport uh, streaming service in germany uh kaibo channel a very unique story in streaming 120,000 subscribers uh, for something that is quite niche on one end a lot of a lot of events but the major major event in las vegas uh between november and december where they he said that uh, for one day they are bigger than any other sport uh on, on app stores in terms of um, profitability of revenues sorry so i think from from the discussion and and we the feedback for the panel was uh it was super energetic we we were there for one hour to be honest having a lot of fun uh it was super energetic because i really had to moderate someone at the end told me you oh, know it was nice uh, you know it's obviously they say it was a nice panel but or a nice session but they said you really had to moderate so there was so so much opinions and passion uh in the panel that i really had to steer the discussion at a certain point because they really wanted to contribute all of them which is nice i think we uh, also all all of them the four of them were all retentions on guests just before and it was not like completely intentional i just realized oh i have them all on the podcast so <laughs> that was already people i knew so it was already also easy to prepare questions for them but i think if Christy represented a big, if, if you want the big media point of view, CBS, et cetera, but also she's now consulting with the rent, other entities. So she has this view of how do you keep, um, you know, customer, how live is important, how really you have to focus on discovery as a way to keep um, customer engaged and then retain them. And, and she thinks discovery is still something that is lagging in the complexity of, especially, obviously we are talking about sports streaming. Um, I think, Yanni comes from a very, uh, you know, um, number-based staff insights, uh, uh, economic point of view, and he's really looking, trying to understand what brings, uh, you know, sport to customer in a way that they can easily access and want to continue to access. And he, he really giving access to people to what they want. 
Uh, Andreas has this concept of uh, being more than a streaming service in Germany for Dine. Uh, they, they say they are the home of the sport, so they really co-invest. It's, it's a partnership with the league. Normally, this is something everybody says, oh, we have a partnership. But I think it's a deeper partnership that we are used to, uh, to the point where I, I don't remember the, the amount, but they donate a certain amount of the, the annual subscription. But the user, so the customer, can decide to which youth organization to donate in their sport, which is really a way to connect, you know, the, the experience on, on screen to the real sport uh, experience for, for youth, which is really nice. I think it's a sign. And, and Cowboy Channel having their own, if you want, uh, churn logic, because basically they have this pricing where you can pay by month, but only the annual subscription gives you access to the final event, which is the one that everybody really cares about you know in, in the world of rodeo and and that's a, a very different way to approaching retention and churn than others so if you want lesson learned every um there is no solution that fits all you really need to need to understand your product and your audience and design strategies that are built for that i think what is crucial is that you have the right data the right tools and the right team to work both a strategic and operational level um, and lastly, I, I spent some time with, with the team at Kling, which obviously are working as a subscription and retention uh, platform. And uh, they also announced something about hybrid monetization, but easier than me talking about them. I just, uh, with my new little camera, did a bit of videos to the team Kling at NAB that I will put uh, here at the end of this video. So. It was really nice to be in Las Vegas, met a lot of people. Um, I hope that IBC will be the same with a lot of energy, but also some new solution and uh, use of AI in a way that is significant. So we can talk about it with some more meat around the bone. Uh, and see you next time with my next guest, guest who will be Alessandro Tucci, who just um, left the 11 uh, organization and the zone. And it will be nice to talk to him next week. Ciao. NAB 2024, uh, our 10th NAB. Uh, so that's uh, really exciting to be there for 10th time. Um, and this year is quite an exceptional year. We've been signing so many uh, recent clients, I uh, can name a few. Uh, Moto America in recent time, Newsmax uh, last uh, November that we launched. Um, we are also uh, launching in a couple of weeks uh, Volleyball World, uh, which will be quite amazing. We had the pleasure of having the NFL team joining to, uh, on stage to explain you know, the value that we've been bringing for the past two years on their platform. And uh, now we are entering in our third year of relationship with them. So this is so cool as a European firm to come to NAB and to be able to share with so many uh, sports federation the learnings that we have about uh, retention management and how to optimize the um, um, total cost of ownership that we have for our video platforms. So um, we've been also introducing uh, this year um, hybrid monetization. So hybrid monetization is certainly the big news of this uh, 2024 NAB for Kling. Um, we were really looking at uh, new business models um, and we wanted to offer a service that will be able to integrate with uh, the subscriber journey, uh, whether they are paying or not paying. Um, they really want, uh, as broadcasters, to reduce their customer acquisition cost. And the big value uh, that you can get out of hybrid monetization is that you can keep the user for a way longer uh, lifetime. So you, you boost the lifetime value, you increase the ARPU through uh, advertising. Um, and this is, at the end of the day, what the industry is looking for at the moment, you know, total cost of ownership. Um, we are also very pleased to announce our partnership with uh, AWS. Uh, we are now part of uh, AWS Marketplace, and we are certainly um, uh, confident that they can bring uh, a lot of uh, new opportunities. Um, uh, they have an incredible footprint in media and entertainment, and our services are highly valued uh, by their monetization teams. This NAB is, uh, is maybe a, a bit different than previous NABs. I think there's uh, a lot of constraint, um, uh, uh, budgetary constraints. So a bit of a gut feel is that there's less investments that has been uh, going into uh, NAB this year. We see that the size of the booths are a bit smaller. Uh, 
uh, maybe a bit less parties or it's just me uh, getting older, uh, which, uh, which is uh, greatly possible. Um, um, it's always fantastic to uh, meet with so many uh, industry experts uh, and connections that we've been building uh, over the years. So always a pleasure to come to NAB, that's for sure. Hi Reeves. Hey Carlo. You're here at NAB in Vegas. And uh, what is Kling bringing this year to the NAB? Uh, this year at NAB, we're unveiling some really new innovation, uh, namely hybrid monetization. So if you think about really the user journey, it doesn't always start and stop on the subscription. There are other ways to monetize the user, primarily through ad-supported uh, monetization, right? So the user could be, um, you know, joining the platform, viewing ads, and eventually upgrading to a more premium subscription. They could eventually churn, right? You're still monetizing the user with ads, providing some value, and then they could rejoin as a, as a subscriber in the future. So it's really about understanding the full landscape of the, the, uh, the relationship with your end user, with your subscriber, all the way through the life cycle, and really optimizing and building customer lifetime value. So it's basically a deeper, and a more holistic approach to customer, consumer, user, subscriber, whatever you call them, throughout the journey, from really the first touch point to even beyond they live. Exactly, throughout the entire journey, right? Through the, the, the peaks, the valleys, and, uh, and everything in between, right? It's about the full subscriber experience, the full user experience, um, and, and really monetizing that, that user, but also creating that engagement, creating that, that, uh, that nurturing that relationship for the entire life cycle. That, that seems a, a really good idea for these times and age. Thank That's you, right. Reeves. That's right. Thanks so much, Carlo. Hi, Joachim. We met at IBC some months ago. You were not yet working for Kling. Now you are. Yes. Please tell me about this month and what you're doing here at NAB. Yeah, so after we met in September, I, I was doing some inter interim work to help uh, launch new customers such as Bean with Todd, the Todd service. And as of December, I joined as Chief Operating Officer. Um, and it's been a, a wild ride. I mean, it's, uh, you can really see the impact of what we're having on the market and on our customers. I mean, the amount of value we, we really make with the portfolio we have. And it's tremendous to see. Well, we attended the Devoncroft seminar. I mean, to me, it's a bit like we have seen this movie before, a bit. But I think what is refreshing to see is that people also say that the market is not growing. And in and, and, and many, both for the technology vendors, but also for the OTT vendors, there are all the services that are out there. And that's creating really good momentum for us, because that's really what we're there to do. Help the customer, our customers to retain their customers, but also grow their revenue. It's always amazing to be uh, to be at NAB, uh, to be uh, demoing here, showing how we bridge the gap uh, on uh, offer management, hybrid monetization, and it's uh, even more exciting to be on uh, AWS uh, booth, uh, who is uh, demoing our solution to uh, acquire subscribers from uh, the AVOT space up until the SVOT space and help retain them even further on your platform to mitigate churn and to increase ARPU. Recently, Kling uh, joined uh, the AWS Marketplace, who became a strong uh, partner of ours. Uh, working together with them, uh, we uh, continue accelerating on the innovation. We are the very first of the industry to create monetization uh, strategies that help bridge the gap between AVOD and SVOD, so to further optimize ARPU and lifetime value of uh, clients.